Hello friends. So today we are going to study one dimensional steady state heat conduction without heat generation. But before starting this, let me tell you something that heat transfer subject is not an easy subject. Like if you say that you get the notes and uh, just before two to three days before the exam and uh, you study all the things and uh, you think that I will be able to write something in my exam or solve numericals and that is not going to be a tip. Okay, so you need some, you have to devote some time and uh, after that you can assume or uh, you will get confidence, right, that you will be able to solve some numericals and uh, write at least some things in exam. Okay, so you need a deep knowledge about heat transfer and still strong concepts are required here. Okay. And please make heat transfer as fun. Okay. Don't take it totally as fun, but make it fun uh, with active learning. Okay. And uh, try to think whatever you are writing, whether it is a derivation or you are solving a numerical, you must be able to know at least what you are doing. Okay. It should not be like a uh, stern imbecile. Okay. And so let's start. So as I've told that we are going to study one dimensional steady state heat conduction without heat generation. And uh, before starting it, you must know each and every term, right? That what is one dimensional, what is a steady state, okay? Heat conduction is no without heat generation, okay? Now what is one dimensional? One dimensional means that temperature variations are significant only in one dimension and they are negligible in other dimensions, okay? So we will consider only the temperature variation are being occurred in one dimension and uh, the steady state means that the temperature doesn't vary with time at any location see guys it's very it is an important line you must know what is steady state so I will repeat that steady state means temperature variations they do not they do not vary with time temperature doesn't vary with time at any location but obviously at different points that temperature will be different okay so let's start with the geometry let us take a plane slab right you can see here that it is a plane slab of length l oh sorry it is a thickness okay don't get confused with l that is it signifies uh, length no it signifies the thickness okay as we are taking only one dimension and uh, on one surface the temperature t1 and on the second surface temperature t2 let us suppose that there is hot fluid and uh, on the other side there is cold fluid okay and this slab has a thermal conductivity K and the heat is flowing from high temperature to lower temperature. Okay. So before starting the derivation as a chemical engineer, you must know what the assumptions you are taking. Okay. For any derivation, you take some assumption, you assume something that you must be able to write what you are assuming. Okay. Otherwise, if you teach this derivation or any other derivation he transfer to a 10th grade student, he will be able to solve it. Okay. But the difference between the 10th grade student and the chemical and the chemical engineer is that you know assumptions. He know he or she knows the assumptions on which he or she is deriving a derivation. Okay. So I am going to tell you some assumptions. Please listen them carefully because I'm not writing it on paper. Okay. So the first dimension, so the first, sorry, so the first assumption is that one, it is a one dimensional conduction that is the thickness L is small compared to dimensions in the Y and Z direction. Okay. And uh, the second assumption is that it is a steady state conduction as I have told that the temperature at any point within the slab doesn't change with time. Of course, temperature at different points within the slab will be different. Okay. The third assumption is that there is no internal heat generation within the slab. Okay. And uh, the fourth and the last one is, is that material of the slab is homogeneous. That is, it has constant density and the material of the slab is isotropic. Okay. So these are some assumptions and uh, let's go for the general differential equation for play, uh, in Cartesian coordinates right it is del upon del x k s del t upon del x plus del upon del y k by del t upon del y plus del upon del z k k z del t upon del z plus q g that is heat generated equal to rho cp del t upon del t okay 
now as i have told you the assumption on basis of that the first assumption was that it is a one dimensional heat conduction so we are neglecting this this has been taken as zero this is taken as zero because there are no temperature variation in y and z direction okay the other the other assumption was that there is no internal heat generation so this is also being zero and uh, it is a steady state heat conduction means the temperature is not varying with time but it is varying with distance so this is being zero the constant density cp all that okay it has gone so what we are left with it is t upon dx k dt upon dx equal to zero or you can say that k is constant you take it here zero by k is zero so you have got t square t upon dx square equal to zero okay as k is constant now we have to start like this see on integrating the previous equation that is t square t upon dx square equal to zero by first by integrating first time you get dt upon dx equal to c1 right and you further integrate it then you get this okay let me draw the diagram again because i need some bonding conditions to solve this you know it is a thickness temperature 1 temperature 2 hot fluid going in this way you can assume and cold fluid is going in this way right and uh, this is x equal to 0 point this is x equal to 12 point okay the full length it means 0 and uh, you know this okay so the first boundary condition is that at x equal to 0 temperature is t1 and at x equal to l temperature is t2 right so put the first boundary condition in this equation you get t1 equal to c2 and by putting second boundary condition in this you will get t2 equal to c1 l plus c2 right or you can say that t2 equal to c1 l plus t1 or t2 minus t1 upon l equal to c1 and t1 equal to c2 right now put this constants the value of this constant in this equation right so what i've got is tx equal to t2 minus t1 upon l into x plus t1 right and if i rearrange this i get tx minus t1 upon t2 minus t1 equal to x upon l and this is temperature distribution within a plane slab right then what is what does this mean that if you are given some thickness and uh, you have been asked that at some other thickness like in intermediate between the whole thickness then what is the temperature at that point at that thickness okay then you are able to calculate is as you know the temperature one you know the temperature two you know the distance up to which uh, on which you have to calculate the temperature you know the full thickness then you are obviously you are able to calculate the x all right now the other thing what we have to do is to find q in order to find out q you need for your law what you need is for your law right and uh, let me tell you that in order to find heat flux we are applying Fourier's law which is q equal to minus k dt upon dx and which is again equal to minus k you know that dt upon dx is t2 minus or uh, if i say t1 minus t2 upon l and if i multiply this negative sign with this term then i get t t2 minus t1 upon right and uh, this is flux and if you multiply it with area then it get q heat right so q will be equal to k a t2 minus t1 upon l right where q is the heat transferred k is the thermal conductivity a is the area t2 minus t1 you know it and l is the thickness of slab okay the other important thing 
which I am going to tell you is resistance of slab. How will find it? It is like del T upon Q. Del T put the value of Q from above to here. Write this delta T as this delta T is a temperature difference and uh, it becomes L upon K resistance of slab. It will be helpful to find out the Q when you are taking composite slabs which we are going to discuss in next video and uh, that's why I have got this resistance slab in this video also so that you can get familiar when I will talk about resistance of slab in next video. So this is all about your uh, derivation of one dimensional steady state heat conduction without heat generation in a geometry which we have taken a plane slab and uh, in the next video as I have told you that we will do one dimensional steady state heat conduction without heat generation in plane slab with composite slab right and we will also get familiar what is overall heat transfer coefficient okay so I think that's enough for today and uh, I hope this video helps you and please don't forget to like share and subscribe my video and uh, thank you so much for giving your precious time